Hi, I'm Nick Haig and I'm the host of the World's Greatest Business Thinkers podcast. Today, I'm speaking with Paul about implementation and specifically implementation frameworks. One of the most difficult tasks in business is making things happen. We can spend time working on frameworks and coming up with plans, but at the end of the day, they have to be implemented. Why is implementation so difficult in business? Many years ago, I was in a training session with a a guru, and he said that, in his view, there are thinkers and there are doers, two different sorts of people, people who are good at thinking and people who are sort of pragmatic and think of doing. And I thought about that a lot at the time. And he said, well, the problem with marketing is there's a lot of thinkers in marketing. There has to be, because in marketing, we always think about frameworks and theories, and we like those very much, and we can design those theories, fill them all in, but somebody at the end of the day has got to do it. And so in some companies, of course, that's split. So there might be a thinker, uh, a group of thinkers in the marketing department and a group of doers in the sales department. And they're not necessarily joined at the hip. You know, they feel that they're going in different directions. So implementation difficulties are often related to the fact that we, we're not always good at the doing bit, but we're very good at the thinking bit. Now, this same guru trainer also on a whiteboard wrote a very large P and a small I with a dot over it, pi. And he said, what's that? And people said, it's pi. And he said, what does it mean? And there were some knowledgeable people who said, well, I think it's that mathematical standard, you know, 3.141, is it? You know, that, that, um, no, 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 he said, it's nothing to do with that. He says, pi, the P stands for uh, planning. And the reason it's a very big P is because that indicates the amount of time when you're implementing implementing something that you should spend on it, a huge amount of time. And the small i is implementation, and it's relative to the time you should spend on it. You know, so spend a lot of time on the planning. There's another old saying, isn't it? Measure it three times and cut it once. You know, in other words, spend your time making sure that what you're going to do is going to work. So if you spend your time doing the analysis, doing the research, it's something we're always recommending people do when they do the frameworks, then the implementation will be easy. If you don't do that, there is a danger that the implementation won't work. So remember the PI, the big P and the small I. I think one thing to also remember is sometimes an idea might just be flawed. Uh, Sometimes the market wasn't ready or a technology needed to mature or a complementary piece of ecosystem needed to develop. Uh, You know, if you look at things like, I don't know, the iPad took 15 years uh, to to get to market, if you count the Newton as the first version of it, or Pampers failed multiple test markets before becoming, you know, Procter & Gamble's biggest brand. So uh, I think it's understanding market dynamics as well within that when you're trying to implement and in fact, on one of my podcasts with Scott Anthony, who's the professor at Tuck School of Business at Dartmouth University, he talks about this very problem with the implementation. So uh, I'd recommend uh, listeners to, to go into well, the Well, Nick, you, you raised a point there about the time it takes to get an invention to market. And this is absolutely true. I mean, in some markets, like the toy market, for example, you can launch a hula hoop or a, whatever it is, a toy, and it'll be ready for Christmas and it's sold extremely quickly. But if you're thinking about a lot of industrial or business products or, or products that people listening to this this podcast will be involved with, it might take years for the material to actually become commercial. And we're not talking sometimes about five years. I mean, things like uh, I'm always mindful of the helicopter, for example, which Leonardo da Vinci, of course, sort of invented, or theoretically invented. But when it was produced commercially, it took 30, 40 years before people started using it a lot. And it's the same with a lot of materials, that new materials that are launched on the market. It's a surprising long time before they actually are used. So when it comes to implementation, we have to be very aware that it might take a long time to get something into the market. Yeah. So we've talked about this whole planning stage up front and that we need to spend a lot of time on that and then we're we're moving into implementation. Um, There must be a starting point with all frameworks. So what's the starting point when considering implementation frameworks? 
Well, we, we've just said, and it, it's worthwhile mentioning, that you need to go back to basic, what's the problem um, that we need a framework for? Because we've always said there are so many frameworks around. In fact, there are 60 frameworks on our website regarding implementation. Because nearly every framework has a starting point and an end point, and the end point is the implementation. So, and, and you and I have discussed when people go to our website, and there's all the dozens, there's over a hundred different frameworks. How do we choose which framework uh, we should have? So it's about identifying the problem. So how do we, the starting point is to identify the problem. How do we do that? Well, we do that by brainstorming. And, you know, you might say, well, that's, that's easy, isn't it? And well, brainstorming can be extremely difficult. First of all, who do you get to the brainstorming session? How do you organize the brainstorming session? I mean, our view is that you should have as many people from as different disciplines there at the brainstorming session. And like every good framework, there should be some structure to it. You don't just sit down and say, well, what's the problem? You know, you go through all the background. So brainstorming is really important. There's a, a framework on the website called um, De Bono Six Hats. And Edward De Bono had this theory that if you sort of wore a white hat or a red hat or a black, a different coloured hat, and that coloured hat reflected how you should think. So the people in the brainstorming session will be told that they are red hat thinkers or black hat thinkers or white hat thinkers and had to think appropriately with that colour on. And then they'd switch colours of hats. And it re results in lots of different ideas that wouldn't come out of a, a conventional brainstorming session. So identifying the problem by brainstorming is the starting point. Once we've identified the problem, we might be then able to say, well, this is the framework that we should use to solve that problem. Yeah, yeah. So can you give us some pointers, therefore, on favourite implementation frameworks we should be aware of and should use? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there are some completely to do with implementation. So there's one on the website, which <clears throat> I know when we were putting it on, I thought, well, surely this is too simple to put on it. It's to-do lists. You know, you've got to implement something and you're thinking how you're going to implement it. And it's a sort of day-to-day -day thing. We probably all make lists, to-do to, to do lists. But actually, there's a technique to using them and using them properly, because if you use them incorrectly, they can be quite dispiriting. You know, you write the list down and you don't achieve what you intended to do on that particular day and it gets carried on to the next day and so on. So have a look at the to-do lists. I think also things like delegation is important when it comes to implementation. You know, we're not going to be heroes who do everything ourselves. We're going to be working with teams of people. And there are frameworks on how do you delegate. Um, one on our website is called RACI, R, and that's an acronym for uh, R-A-C-I. And the R stands for uh, taking responsibility. So this is a problem. Um, I'm going to delegate it, but I am ultimately responsible for that problem. The A is for accountable. So somebody at some stage is going to say, have you achieved what you set out to achieve? And that's the accountability that's required if you're a good delegator. And the C is for consultation, because if you are delegating, you need to be communicating all the time with the team that's actually doing the job. So consultation is important. And finally, you need information coming back telling you how things are going on. So it's worth people having a look at that RACI framework for, for delegation. Yeah. And a framework I came across quite recently, another acronym, apologies for that, is called DMAKE. Uh, the, the D stands for define the problem. The M in DMAKE stands for measure things, measure it at the beginning, measure it as you're going through the implementation stage, analyze everything so you know whether it's working or not, and improve it if it's not, and have a control to ensure that that happens. So that's the DMAKE um, framework that's recently been added to the website. Yeah. And I think from just what you described there, you know, that's where there's the richness on the website because it's from the broad, you know, a to-do list, create how, what's the yes. framework there, to the specific. And I know for, from, from me, for, from a marketing background in, and, and a strategy background in helping clients over the years, you know, there's, there's very specific ones on there. Uh, 
Van Westendorp is, is one of my favourites, you know, so if you, we've talked about the four P's, um, but when you're looking to, to get that accurate pricing, it's, it's a fairly simple model framework where you ask just four questions you know understanding uh, if someone a respondent would consider the product or service too cheap uh, or too expensive if it would be priced so cheaply that you you'd worry about its quality or if it was too expensive to even consider buying it and then you plot uh, through various different questions you know obviously you, you've got uh, a few hundred respondents you'd be speaking to and then you'd plot your answers and at those various different intersections of those curves that gives you your, your pricing options uh, so it's, it's a really good framework to help with the implementation uh, when you go to market in terms of where you should position that price. Uh, and it's a good point to finish on, Nick, because what you've said with Van Westendorp is that if you apply the framework, up pops the answer. This is the price that we should charge for our product. So it's back to the big P and the small I. We've done all that planning that's told us that we should charge $3.20 or whatever it is. The implementation now is really quite quick and quite simple. Yeah, yeah. So lots of frameworks on the website uh, on how to, you know, not only start the, the planning process, uh, whether that's brainstorming, but through to those specifics. Uh, and then, you know, that, that whole you know, intersection of, uh, of the process of organisational change and how you can strategize and, uh, and plan and implement around that with those control systems as well. So lots to delve into. So thanks for your help today, Paul. Thank you.